Who won the witchy book and phoenix amulet giveaway? You're about to find out. If I don't announce your name, don't despair, dears. I got a dark moon banishing spell just in time for the upcoming black moon that's happening on the 31st of July 2019, which is in just a few days. This spell includes one of my download sheets with my brand new dark moon banishing sigil. And uh, it's gonna be really cool. So hang around for that. I'm Mickey Mueller. Welcome to my studio. Hi everybody, if you're new here, I'm Mickey Mueller, author, illustrator, and witchy woman. I bring you weekly videos with spells, witchy trips, <sighs> witchy trips. I bring you weekly videos with spells, witchy tips, and other sundries for living your magical life. If you haven't yet, be sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so that you'll know when I upload new videos. All right, let's get started. All right, I know everybody's anxiously waiting to find out who won the Magical Almanac fabric bookmark with my triple goddess art on it and the beautiful little Phoenix amulet from my Etsy store. I'm going to announce that in just a couple of minutes. I'm not going to make you wait till the end of the video because we all want to know who won and we can get that started and then I can get this shipped out to the lucky winner. But before I get into that, I had to share something that came for me in the mail this week that was totally unexpected and just beautiful and fun and sweet and I just have to give a shout out to my my dear friends over at Sacred Source. So they have this new CD. I don't know if you guys have seen it yet or not. This is, oop, and my light's gonna reflect on it. There we go, whoop, there we go. This is their new CD. It's beautiful ambient music. It's all guitar music and uh, Pete who runs Sacred Source actually is the musician so this is like legit from sacred source this is their music they didn't hire some magics magician they didn't hire some musician to make this cd for them this is actually created by them they're really cool people they not only do they run a fantastic statuary uh, business because i'm a statuary designer for them they're just really good people um but they also are beekeepers and uh, they contribute a lot to the community. Lovely little setup. And um, I will provide a link below with, uh, so that if you guys decide you want a copy of this, you can grab one. When this arrived, it had this beautiful little uh, organza bag. And in the bag was this gorgeous pendant that I'm wearing today. I'll take it off so you can see it closer. Focus on that. Oh, there you go. There you go. How pretty is that? It's just beautiful. That's called a flower of life. It's a sacred geometry symbol. Click on it again there. See if you can see it any better. It's sacred geometry, and it's just a symbol of life and all things happening. It's very cool. Guess what, you guys? If you get the CD, the, the necklace is included. So I was like, yay! That means everybody can get one. They're beautiful. Um, it came on a re this real pretty, uh, this really pretty purple satin cord. Um, I think I might do a little, I might bead it or put it on like a cord with some beads to symbolize, you know, uh, life and health and things like that. So that would be really cool. But yeah, this is really neat. And it, it arrived on my, um, hysterectiversary. <laughs> which is the anniversary of my hysterectomy that I had a year ago. Who cares? Anyway, um, sacred source, check them out. Okay, so now we're going to announce the winner of this beautiful little little prize pack. Um, so here's what happened because I'm a big doofus and I set the, uh, the time, I put the time on the contest is gonna end at midnight, not realizing that, gee, I guess I probably should be awake at midnight to do the drawing and um, it's just the afternoon here now and I'm not gonna film this video at midnight. But here's what I am gonna do. I'm not gonna upload this until tomorrow. It's gonna get a little time traveling on you. Um, so what I'm gonna do is uh, in just a minute here, I'm gonna click to me tonight at midnight. You can see me all bedraggled while I pick the winner and, and then we'll come back to me now in the present time 
it's um it's a little less Doctor Who and a little more Bill and Ted. But we're gonna do that, okay. Alright, here we go. Here we go. Who did it do? <laughs> Future Mickey? Hmm? Oh, thanks, past Mickey. So we are now in the future, um, otherwise known as Past Midnight, from before when I was filming. I'm just doing a little light reading. I'd tell you what this is about, but no spoilers. Oh, let me grab my computer and let's pick a winner. I got my little thing here on my laptop. Um, first of all, I have to give a shout out and a thanks to uh, Palm Tree Bewitchery uh, for helping me not look like a complete idiot because I wasn't really sure how to do a giveaway on YouTube. I almost printed out uh, all, of the, all of the entries and cut them out and like put them in a hat like some kind of big idiot. But uh, I checked with her because I had seen that she had just done a giveaway and she she told, told me how to find an app that I could do it on. So that's much better. Okay. So it looks like we just hit the button. And the wheel spins round and round. Stephanie loves... Stephanie loves fall. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. Stephanie loves fall. You are the winner of the... A magical almanac that has my article in it about uh, magical self-care during hard times. You'll also be getting the Phoenix Mother of Pearl amulet and uh, a triple goddess bookmark. See, it's late. It's after midnight. It's actually two in the morning. <laughs> so that's going on. But don't judge me. Uh, I'm drinking my little tea. I'm hoping that'll Get me in a more mellow mood so I can go crash soon. Ugh. Well, now that we're done with the drawing, I've got to see how this thing ends. So anyway, I guess uh, we will go back to the past, to past Mickey. There you go, past Mickey. Thanks, future Mickey. I really appreciate it. So now you know who the winner is. Make sure that you reach out to me. Make sure that you send me a message, a private message. So on any of my social media or on my email address, which I'll put down below, let me know and give me your address so that I can ship this stuff out to you. Okay. I will not share the address. Do not post your address in the comments below. Okay. Don't do that. Don't do that. All right, dear. So if you didn't win, do not go away yet, okay? Because I've got a spell for you, because I care. I wanted to have something for everybody, not just for the person who wins this. I just wanted all of you guys to have something special because I think it's amazing that you guys are all here, that we're co-creating this space where we can talk about witchy things and, you know, back and forth and learn together all kinds of cool things. So um, I wanted to create a new spell for you and the black moon is coming up. So I thought this seems like a good time to do a little banishing spell. So all of the kind of magic that you do right around that dark moon time, that little, little waning crescent just as it vanishes, and that dark moon in the sky when you can't see it at all, and then that little bitty new crescent as it just starts to peak at the very beginning of the new cycle of the moon and it happens every 28 days just like clockwork because that's how it works that is a great time for doing magic uh for banishing cleansing and rebirth and this this spell kind of brings all that in together um when i did my last video and i talked about the phoenix I, it seemed like it really resonated with a lot of you guys like it resonated with me too and we shared in our comments, a lot of us shared our stories about our moments, our challenges in which we realized that we were that phoenix. And so that kind of made me think of this spell. You guys inspired it, and that's why I wrote it for you. Um, this spell is literally just inspired by your guys' comments. And I thought, gosh, we could all use it. You know, we all need to banish things. We all need to have that moment of 
of rest and protection during that dark moon and then preparing for that uh, that new moon energy of rebirth, of re rebirth from the flames, right? Like we talked about the Phoenix last week. Because of that, because of those conversations and the sharing that we had, and it was so cool to hear your guys' stories and um, get support for my stories too. It made me feel really good to, to have that interaction with you guys. I created this sigil. Let's see if I can show it to you a little bit better because I want to talk to you about the symbolism behind it. I mean, it looks cool, but it's more than just looking cool. It's about, it's about the magic, you know, it's about what's happening. So uh, there's a lot of different kinds of sigils that people do. Um, there's a lot of more simple kinds of sigils and I'll probably do a video in the future uh, showing some of those techniques. You don't have to be an artist to create a sigil. But because I'm an artist, I like to make fancy, pretty sigils. I just do. It's fun for me. Um, and I, when I have a pretty uh, aesthetic to look at, it awakens things inside of me and helps me to focus and feel magical and awaken that inner child part of me that I use when I create magic. And I, and so, because of that, I like to make pretty sigils. Do I always? No, I don't always. Sometimes I'll do a real simple sigil because I just don't have time for that, okay? But for some things, I like to do a fancier something, kind of like what I did here. So everything here, just because it looks cool and witchy doesn't mean that it's just there for aesthetics. It absolutely is, and everything here is has a purpose. And I'll explain to you what those purposes are. Okay, so at the top of this there, I'm going to show you this version instead because I think it will make more sense to you. Um, that other version is the way I actually drew it, but I drew it with the intention that I was going to scan it and put it in Photoshop and manipulate some stuff around. So, uh, so first of all, we've got the moons up here and these moons are, um, it's, it's moon phases like you're used to seeing, but there's a slight difference. What you're used to seeing is a full moon at the top, right? I wanted the dark moon at the top because I want that to be the pinnacle of the magic force that's happening within this sigil, is that dark moon energy. So it's got the dark moon at the top. It's a, it's a, gosh, dyslexia rears its ugly head. Hang on. This is the side when the moon is getting, that little sliver of moon is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. That is the time in the moon's phase where we are releasing things that we don't want in our life anymore. We're starting to release those things and send them packing. We're just trying to, yes, send them away from us. Uh, when we move to the center point, which is the pinnacle of this, that is the point where all the stuff that you've released, you may now banish during the dark moon. Okay, and then after that dark moon, it's going to start, the moon is going to start growing again and getting brighter and brighter and brighter every night. All right, that's the time of the moon cycle in which we are focusing on rebirth. And the rebirth happens because of the hard work that we did here of releasing stuff, okay? Uh, you don't get anything good without hard work. And so the hard work comes here and then we do the banishing and then we get to do the rebirth part, which can also be challenging. Rebirth can be a challenging time too. So we have to do a lot of self-care uh, when we're working on banishing stuff. I think, I feel like whenever I'm doing banishings, I try to drink a lot of water. I try to meditate a lot. I try to focus on myself and my true voice and my inner wisdom and really listen to me. And I think that uh, anybody who wants to do that kind of work, it's, it's, good advice for anybody. Okay, so that is the symbolism of those moon phases up there. They're not just there to look cool, they're there for a reason. All right, now that brings us to the next symbol, which is the obvious one. That's a death's head moth, and I'll bring it up closer so you can see the death's head moth, and he's cool. It's pretty cool looking because, you know, it's got that little skull. I'll show it on this bigger one. This is the one that, but I inverted it in Photoshop, right? You can see the little skull, right? there on his back. When I put it in Photoshop, I inverted it so that you would get the white skull. 
because I knew I was doing that. Forget it. I'm just going to show you this one. It's easier. Anyway, you get the idea of how they how it changes when you invert it with the colors. So anyway, the Death's Head Mud. So there's a couple other sing symbols symbols that the Death's Head Moth makes me think of every time I see it. All right, and it's not Silence of the Lambs, though it does a little bit make me think of Silence of the Lambs. Uh, and I do enjoy a good horror movie. But that aside, a uh, Death's Head Moth or any moth is a symbol of rebirth. It is. Um, but they're a symbol of rebirth in a similar way to the way that a butterfly is. Um, but butterflies are a symbol of rebirth in the daytime, whereas a moth is a symbol of rebirth at night. It's that dark moon change that we're talking about, um, that going inside yourself, that really dark place, and then being guided by the moon after your, your rebirth. When you've spread your wings, you're guided by the moon, um, and instead of necessarily dancing in the sunlight. So it's a matter of uh, the really, really hard changes you might attribute to moth energy, whereas slightly easier changes, but still difficult changes, you can apply to butterfly magic. So um, that's why I chose the death head moth. The other reason um, is it also reminds me, who it just got super dark in here, you guys. Did you see that? I think we got a storm brewing. Let me see if I can get some more lights on. Ah. <laughs> I'm a little blown out. Eh. Okay, I think that's a little bit better. Um, anyway, back to the symbolism of these of this guy. Um, the other thing that the Death's Head Moth reminds me of, oftentimes, is the Death Card from the Tarot deck. And if any, anybody who works with Tarot or that's had a Tarot reading and seen the Death Card come up, you know, every the first and all of us readers know, and any tarot people, we all know, it's the one card that freaks everybody out the most. But it does, and we always tell them, what do we tell them? Oh, don't worry, it doesn't mean death. It actually means change, transformation, right? It means brushing away the old to make room for the new. It's what it's all about. It's not a scary card. It looks like a scary card because it's got the death guy on the horse and I don't have one with me to show you and I should have probably grabbed one, but everybody knows what that card looks like, I think. Um, so anyway, um, these, the uh, moth also reminded me a lot of the, uh, the death card from the tarot. So I thought that kind of symbolism kind of works. For that. Okay, so the next symbol that I included is the triangle. And again, it looks cool, yeah, but that's not the only reason that it's there. Um, gosh. My light is just everywhere. It's all every which way today. Okay, so the triangle on this symbol is a, a triangle of manifestation. And I will probably talk about that further in another video. But basically, the idea of the triangle, it's a very powerful symbol. It's a very strong symbol. This is something I learned about when I was uh, studying design. And um, but it, also, it also involves magic as well. It's a very powerful magical symbol. And what the triangle of manifestation represents is the three sides are equal. One's pointing up and the three sides are equal. And the reason for that is there are three things that you need in order to manifest. You need time to do it, you need the space in which to do it, and you need the energy with which to do it. And that is the triangle of manifestation. So I included that on here, basically for some really powerful making it all happen energy. So that is there. And then this symbol at the bottom um, this, this is a symbol that I love to use. It goes way back to uh, Scott Cunningham's book that we all <laughs> grew up with as young witches. A Wicca Guide for the Solitary Practitioner. That's the first place I ever saw the symbol. And it's a symbol for blessing. So what I wanted to do was create this symbol that's all about manifesting, uh, manifesting changes in your life. Getting rid of what you don't need anymore. Uh, banishing it out of your life, being reborn again into something better. 
and following your intuition and manifesting that as well as, uh, and I wanted all of that to be supported with blessings. So I put the blessing symbol below so the blessing supports all of these concepts. That way the work that you're doing will manifest as a blessing. So that's the symbol, that's the reason for all of the little things that are happening on in here and I hope you love it. So what I've done is I have um, created a sheet that you can download. The link, as always, is right below. Uh, you can download that and print it out and cut out the little, you'll see it when you print it out, you can cut out the little sheet and um, you can use that as your petition for this magic. And this is petition magic, and I love petition magic. It's one of, one of my favorite ways to do stuff. It's super easy. It's the kind of thing that I like to do uh, on Samhain if I have guests over that are uh, planning to stay for uh, a little ritual later, especially if it's people who aren't really familiar with magic, but they're like, you know, you're a witch and all. Let's do, let's do a little magic. It's one of the things that I really like to, to do uh, is petition magic because it's super easy and everybody can do it. Now, just because it's easy doesn't mean that it's not powerful. It's a very powerful form of magic. And I think that you'll see uh, when I show you how this all works that even though it's simple, it's got a real babam to it. Okay, I put that sigil on it to empower what you And do. quite simply, what you're going to do is print that out. And then go ahead and cut the little uh, petition sheet out. So this is just really a very basic banishing spell. Lots of people do this style. It's very simple to do. I was really honored to be part of one that was hosted by Kim and Amanda from Love and, Love and Light is Our Home over on their Facebook page. And then the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is think about the things that you wanna banish from your life and really meditate on that. Um, and then write them down on the sheet. You can write as many or as few as you like, but really think about it. And as you're doing this, uh, focus on the ways in which what you want to banish is affecting your life. Really feel that, really think about it. And you can write anything you like. You can write bad habits that you have, old behavior patterns that aren't serving you well, obstacles to your goals, um, negative ties, uh, all kinds of things like that. So basically anything that you want to get rid of your from your life, you're going to write those things down and then think about the ways in which these things have affected your life and really feel that in your heart. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to assert your power over these things and you're going to do so by crossing them off your list. Essentially, you are energetically saying, I'm done with you. Another way to do it that some people like to do is to write, sign your name, your autograph, basically, over the tops of all of these things. And that also asserts your power over the things that you want to banish from your life because you're covering it. Now you're gonna fold that petition in half, and this part is just to create a uh, channel on the page that will hold the herbs that you're gonna add. I added cayenne pepper. These are all great banishing herbs, and you can find them right in your kitchen. The second one was cinnamon and garlic powder. And I also had some, uh, some garlic skins because I like to cook with fresh garlic. So I saved those and I decided to add those as well for some extra garlic energy. And then I just add plain black pepper, which is a fantastic banishing herb, and sea salt. And that's my regular salt and pepper shakers that I use every day, but I keep sea salt in my salt and pepper shaker well in the salt shaker. So then fold that uh, petition away from you, mindfully thinking about the fact that you're removing, that's why you're folding it away from you. Then you turn it counterclockwise, because we're, again, because we're removing, and then fold it in half again. If you wanna stop there, if you're using a candle to light it, you might wanna stop there. Otherwise, if you're gonna cast it on a bonfire, you can fold it a third time. I found that if I only folded it twice, it burned better because of the herbs inside and everything, if I just folded it twice. 
Now you're going to empower it. And here's the incantation that I wrote. I banish by the dark of the moon, out of my life, not a moment too soon. That which no longer serves me shall fly, not an ounce of regret, as I bid you goodbye. For the greater good and with harm to none, so mote it be. And here's a little incantation that you're going to add to the burning process of this. Flame to purify, flame to banish, flame will renew. And that is your intention. If you're burning this in the house, you need to have something fireproof to put it in, something big enough that that flame is not going to escape. Don't use like a little plate. Use a nice deep bowl. This little cauldron is really deep, and I love it for burning stuff like that. It's, this lets off a lot of smoke because those herbs that are in there, well, those are going to burn, and they basically turn into banishing incense. So this creates its own incense, this spell does. It's kind of cool. Now, you saw what we put in there. I'm not going to say that incense smells great, but that's what it does. If you're in a situation where you can't burn it or you just don't want to, you can still do this banishing spell by burying that petition in your yard. You can bury it in a potted plant. You can take it to a public trash can far away from your home. There's all kinds of options and they work just as well as burning. If you're going to do a bonfire outside, just throw it on the fire. All right, so that's what I've got for you today. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that uh, I hope that you enjoy the spell and that it's useful for you. I'm definitely going to do it during this black moon, and I hope that you guys join me. Uh, we can all use it. Goodness knows. I'm like, ooh, we're all on the same page, and we really need to clear some of the things that don't serve us anymore out of our lives and embrace the new because. Just like when you're cleaning a closet, for goodness sake, you can't put any new clothes in there until you get rid of the old stuff. And that's a good way of looking at the energies that we keep in our lives. Uh, you cannot embrace anything new until you clear out the stagnant old energy that you don't need anymore. This necklace like glows. I just realized it's like... <sighs> Drop me a line in the comments. Let me know what you thought. When you do the spell, if you want to share your thoughts, feel free to drop me a line. I would love to hear how, how it worked out for you, how it felt when you released those things. That's, that's, a, that's a pretty cool thing. Um, maybe I'll drop a comment and let you guys know how it went for me too. So check back in and let's see. Um, if you were not the winner of the uh, book giveaway, which there was only one winner, so most of you guys are not the winner of the book giveaway, do not worry. I have got, I got two more books in that book haul that I got from Llewellyn, the books that I wrote articles for. So I'm going to give two more books away coming up. If you're new, hit subscribe, because you know you want to come back, because I have tons of spells that I do here, all kinds of other witchy stuff. Thank you so much for joining me today in my witchy studio. And uh, I hope that you have a blessed week. And as always, remember to be your magic. Bye, everybody.